anything that you found that you liked in object-oriented programming, just keep it. <laughs> just don't think of it as a force. Don't think of it as you have to do this. One thing that object-oriented programming will do is divert a lot of your programming time towards organization. I'll, I'll give you a hypothesis of something that I, is, I think, what probably happened to me, but it may, and it may or may not be something that happens to other people as well. And that is, I think one reason that people think things like inheritance hierarchies work or are good is because you learn them, you can't really start using an inheritance hierarchy if you don't know how to type in like an expression because there's no code to put in a hierarchy, right? So you're going to sort of learn something about programming before you really are making your own inheritance hierarchies for real. You might be using toy ones or something, but you're not really programming. So I think most people start doing like inheritance hierarchy things, especially at that time, they have been programming in C or some other procedural way for a while, but they're not that good at structuring their code. Object-oriented gives them a way to start structuring their code that just happens to be bad, but it is a way of structuring their code. And they then get in the habit of structuring their code more. Like they spend more time thinking about how to organize their code. My argument is they're spending it doing bad organization of the code, but they are spending more time because there's one thing that object oriented programming will do is divert a lot of your programming time towards organization, right? Because there's tons of rules and tons of different things you can do to do that and all this other stuff. So I think one thing that happens is you then think, oh, well, this is good because my code is more organized now and you're not necessarily wrong. But if you then just say, I'm not going to use any of these OOP things anymore, your brain still remembers a bunch of stuff about, oh, I like to organize things now. So I'm going to want to like think about how to keep these things from arbitrarily intermixing. And I might take time to separate two things out because I've been told to do that in object oriented. Now that I'm not object oriented, I will do that with functions sometimes and other things like that. And you'll find that you actually do procedural code really good almost automatically, <laughs> right? And so that's sort of what happened. It was like, oh, I'm much better now than I was when I went into object-oriented programming, right? Not necessarily because of object-oriented, but because I was focused on code organization for a while. And just because the things I was trying to organize my code into were bad, it still built up a part of my brain that's thinking about organization. So all I really had to do was change that to be targeting something else. Instead of targeting breaking things up into small pieces of data with associated members, it was how do I break it up into small pieces of data with external functions that work across multiple pieces of data? Just straightforward procedural stuff, but not that complicated. And my brain just did it. What are you, Obviously just- Were you fighting the urge of doing like, for example, encapsulation or something like that? Not really, because you still, I mean, one of the nice things about procedural is it's just a superset, right? If you want to have a function that only operates on one struct, well, that's object oriented, isn't it? Right? I mean, it's like, it's, you could think of that as being encapsulated <laughs> in some way. Now it's not getting ridiculous. It's not doing some of the worst stuff, which is like, oh, and anything that inherits from this because I made it a virtual function or something like you could make it icky if you want to, but you can still have things encapsulated as much as you want by just saying, here's a set of functions that only operate on the struct. That's pretty encapsulated. It's not, you know, going maybe as far as some OOP proponents would want you to by making it a virtual dispatch or something like that, but it's still something like that. So rarely do you have to fight the urge really all that much. All you have to do is just give yourself the option, like if something is better expressed as operating across objects, don't, you don't have to think about associating it with anyone, right? Just stop yeah. thinking about that. And all of a sudden all your code gets much better. It's very easy to unlearn these bad habits. Just stop thinking about X and you're good, right? <laughs> um, so I found that it was actually pretty easy and it's just very freeing. And anything that you found that you liked in object-oriented programming, just keep it. <laughs> just don't think of it as a force. Don't think of it as you have to do this um, because some weird person who wrote a book told you to.
right? Just forget that. If you find that you still want something very tightly coupled to this particular data type, then it is. It's fine. It works just fine in procedural, right? It doesn't need to be yeah. a member. Yeah. 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 